Hello lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this lesson, we shall be discussing AC writing. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. By the end of chapter 1, you will be able to list the four writing modes. Distinguish the four writing modes. Use the features and skills involved in each writing mode. Write fluently about each writing mode. Acer writing is a piece of writing in prose form. It consists of more than one paragraph that sets out the issues it discusses. The writing mode candidates often write on are narrative essay, descriptive essay, expository essay, and argumentative essay. What this simply means is that whether you are writing a letter, an article, a debate, or a story, your essay will fall under these four major writing modes. What did we say these four writing modes are? The writing modes are narrative essay, descriptive essay, expository essay, and argumentative essay. In writing any of these modes, there are certain general skills and strategies that writers should adopt to achieve success of such writing. Let us distinguish the four writing modes, starting with narration. A narration is a writing mode that generally talks about a story or generally tells a story. The story is developed in a chronological order, from what happened first to what happened next, and so on. This arrangement is very important since the events one has seen, has heard, or has experienced are related. In narration, Writers use elements such as setting, thus the time and place an action takes place, characters, conflict, plot, flashback, point of view, suspense, climax, and resolution. Next is descriptive essay. A descriptive essay is a writing mode in which a writer paints a word picture of a person, event, place, or anything to appeal to the five senses. Descriptive essay appeals to the senses of touch, sight, hearing, smell, and taste. The aim of descriptive essay is to test candidates' ability to use words in a beautiful way to appeal to the writer to visualize or see in the mind's eye the person, place, event, or things that have been described through sensory impressions. Let's now shift our focus to expository essay. An expository essay explains how something is done. It may also give direction or instruction about how to complete a task. There are various dimensions of expository essay that shows how to complete a task or how to complete a process. The subclasses of expository essay include the following. 1. The process essay. 2. The problem solution essay. 3. The definition essay. 4. The Comparison Contrast AC. 5. The Cause and Effect AC. Lastly, is the Argumentative AC. The Argumentative AC is sometimes called the Persuasive AC. Here, candidates are presented with two sides of an argument and are expected to support one side of the argument with strength of logic in order to convince the readers to accept his or her reason for supporting one side of the argument and not the other. In this chapter, 
we have learned that there are four writing modes. And these writing modes are narrative essay, descriptive essay, expository essay, and argumentative essay. Each of these has its peculiar features and each requires proper planning. In our next chapter, we shall be discussing planning and AC. Welcome to chapter 2 of AC Writing. In this lesson, we shall be discussing how to plan an AC. By the end of chapter 2, you will be able to structure your ideas to improve your AC writing skills. Plan effectively before you start writing any AC. Planning an AC is very essential in AC writing, but the simple question is, how do you plan an AC? Most candidates claim that they simply do not have enough time to plan an AC in exams for about 5 to 10 minutes. Yet, if you observe them closely during examination, it is clear that they still have to plan. Candidates who attempt an AC without planning will either forget their main point after the first paragraph or stop to think again before they proceed. In the end, they will end up planning an essay but in the worst possible way and spending more time than they would have done if they had planned the essay in the beginning. Therefore, planning an essay is the first step to a successful essay writing. Here are some of the few guidelines to give you a clear picture of how to plan a standard AC in examination. 1. Understanding In this first step, you have to understand the topic or think about it carefully to know what the topic demands of you and the features that are involved in that particular kind of question. 2. Gathering Here, you have to gather main ideas that come to your mind for the essay. Jot down in rough phrases every idea that comes to your mind about the topic you are about to write on. Explore ideas that pop into your head and put them down. 3. Organization Organize your ideas in a chronological order to be sequentially developed in paragraphs later. 4. Prepare a scratch outline. After making a logical arrangement of the ideas, prepare a scratch outline of each main idea for effective development into the introductory and supporting paragraph. Make sure the introductory paragraph contains the thesis statement around which the whole essay revolves. You can now write about the essay using the ideas you have organized in the scratch outline. In our next chapter, we shall be discussing how to introduce your essay. Welcome to chapter 3 of Essay Writing. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to introduce your essay to the admiration of the reader, provide the background information needed for readers to understand the essay. The introduction is made up of the opening sentence, general statement and teaser statements. The purpose of the introduction is to brief the readers on what the writer has to say. It gives readers the pulse of the essay. If the introduction is not interesting, then the reader may not be interested in reading the rest of the essay. Therefore, it is very necessary to know how to introduce your essay to the admiration of the examiner. There are several strategies that make your essay interesting and engaging. Depending on the type of essay you are writing, you may introduce your essay in any of the following ways. One. A strong opinion. Make a broad general statement about the topic and narrow it down to your thesis statement. Starting the essay with a strong opinion or a strong point is a very good way to begin an essay and also 
catch the attention of the examiner, which will enhance the reader's interest in your essay. 2. Pose a question. Beginning with a question can make your reader want to read until you find out the answers to those questions you have asked. You can ask one or more questions about the topic for the readers to think about the possible answers to those questions. For example, in treating the term streetism, you may ask the following questions. What is streetism? Do street children have parents? Do street children enjoy the luxuries of life? All these questions will enhance the reader's interest in your essay. 3. Use a quotation. You can begin your essay with a quotation, especially one that matches with the topic you are discussing in your essay to catch the attention of the readers. A quotation can be something you have read in a book, an article, or something you have heard from a popular person. Example, a stage in time saves nine. Life is how you solve daily problems, and cowards die many times before their death. Six, explain the importance of the topic. Explaining the importance of the topic is another way to get your reader's interest in what you are writing. 6. Use an incident or brief story. Using an incident or brief story is another way to get the examiner interested in reading what you have written. However, the story should be brief and related to the topic of the essay. Welcome to chapter 4 of essay writing. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to write the body of a letter. You should bear in mind that the major points that will support the thesis statement are developed in the body paragraph of an essay. The supporting point should be developed one after the other in separate paragraphs. Again, each of the supporting paragraphs should begin with a topic sentence that states the main point to be developed in a paragraph. How to organize and connect specific details. As you generate the specific details needed to support the thesis statement and the supporting point, you should think about the ways to organize or connect those details to achieve coherence in the essay. You can organize and connect details by setting signposts or transitions so that the details stick together for a pro prospective reader to move smoothly and clearly from one bit of supporting information to the next. Let us look at some of such signals. One is time signals. Examples of time signals include to begin with, first, next, after that, then, while, meanwhile, soon, now, during, before, finally, to mention but few. Two, you can also use addition signals. Addition signals include first of all, second, the third reason is that also another poet worth mentioning. In addition, moreover, furthermore, finally, to mention but few. Three, Change of direction signal. Change of direction signal includes the following. But, however, yet, in contrast, although, otherwise, still, on the contrary, 
On the other hand, nevertheless, unlike, whereas, etc. 4. Comparison signals. Examples of comparison signals include similarly, likewise, also, in the same way, etc. 5. Illustration signals. Illustration signals include the following. For example, for instance, as an illustration, such as to mention but few. 6. Emphatic order signals. Finally, last of all, last but not least, most important, to mention but few. The emphatic order is sometimes described as saving the best points last. It is an important way to emphasize on the most interesting or more important details by placing it in the final supporting paragraph of an essay. The last position in an essay is the most emphatic position because the reader is most likely to remember the last statement. 7. Conclusion Signals Last of all, consequently, then, as a result, in summary, to conclude, finally, to sum up, in brief, as a whole, in short, in conclusion. All the following are things that you need to achieve coherence in your writing. Now, let's talk about how to achieve unity in your AC. To achieve unity in your AC, you should discuss only one supporting point or idea. The supporting point should be expressed in a topic sentence and well developed by providing specific details. There should not be any irrelevant details in the main idea. Each supporting point must support the workable thesis to achieve unity. Welcome to chapter 5 of Easter Writing. In this chapter, we shall be discussing some common methods of concluding your essay. In any essay, there should be a conclusion. The concluding paragraph often summarizes the essay by briefing or restating the thesis statement and the main supporting point. In addition, you should present a concluding thought about the subject of the topic. Some common methods of concluding essay include the following. 1. End with a summary and final thought. Restate the thesis statement and supporting point, but do not use the exact wording you used earlier in the essay. A combination of the summary and a final thought is the most common method of concluding an essay. 2. You may include a thought-provoking question. A question grabs the attention of readers. It is a direct appeal to the reader to think further about what you have written. 3. You may also end your essay with a prediction or recommendation. Here, give predictions and recommendations to involve your readers in the essay. A prediction states what may happen in the future, whilst a recommendation suggests what should be done about a situation or problem. Sentence skills. In writing an essay, you should make sure that your sentences flow smoothly and clearly. You should therefore edit your essay 
so that your sentences are free from error. Go by the following sentence skills. 1. Write complete sentences rather than fragments of sentences. 2. Do not write run-on sentences. 3. Use verbs and tenses correctly and consistently. 4. Make sure the subject agrees with the verb. 5. Use pronoun forms and types correctly. 6. Use adjectives and adverbs correctly. 7. Avoid faulty modifiers. 8. Use capital letters where needed. 9. Use punctuation marks correctly. 10. Eliminate spelling errors. 11. Use appropriate vocabulary or register for the type of essay. 12. Choose words effectively to avoid clenches, slams, and wordiness. 13. Vary your sentences. 14. Edit your essay to eliminate careless errors. Let's now talk about how to avoid wordiness. Wordiness means using more than the words necessary to express a meaning. This shows careless writing. To avoid wordiness, you should use concise words. By doing so, you improve your sentences. You should therefore reduce wordy expressions to single words. Study the examples below. At the present time, the concise form is now. In the near future, the concise form is soon or in future. Due to the fact that the concise form is because. In every instance, the concise form is always. In this day and age, the concise form is today.